the graphs of rational functions, particularly their vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, zeros, and holes. And we've completed an assignment where we identified each of those features for 14 different functions. This happens to be the information for problem number 12 on that assignment. For that assignment, we were given the function x squared plus 6x plus 8 over x squared plus 3x minus 4. The first thing we always do when we attack these functions is we factor the function. And when you factor uh, f of x, you cancel out the x plus 4 terms and end up with x plus 2 over x minus 2, excuse me, x minus 1. From there, we get a lot of information. We find out that because we canceled x plus 4, there's a hole at negative 4. And we can plot that point down here in entry 9. We make a point negative 4 comma g of negative 4. We get a vertical asymptote because the denominator is 0 at x equals 1. So we can plot that line. Notice it's dashed here and it shows up in red on the graph. In the numerator, we can make the numerator 0 at negative 2, and that gives a 0 for the function at place where it crosses the x-axis, which is right there, that red dot, negative 2, 0. And then because this polynomial, these two polynomials, uh, in the numerator and denominator have the same degree, they are both second-degree polynomials, we know that we're going to have a horizontal asymptote at the ratio of the leading coefficients. And you'll see here that the coefficients are 1 and 1 because the leading coefficients are 1, and all that tells us is that we have a horizontal asymptote here at y equals 1. It's the green line right here. So the rational function itself is the blue curve, the two branches there. The vertical asymptote is the red dotted line. The horizontal asymptote is the green dotted line. The red dot is the zero for this function, and the green hole is the hole or missing point in this function. Now what I want to show you is how we can take this particular graph, which you've received the link to, we can make a copy of it, they call that duplicating it, and we can make a graph for any one of the problems on the assignment. I'm going to actually um, do number 14 next. Before we do that though, make sure that you're logged in. You can notice that I'm logged in here uh, with my Dragonometry login. And you'll need to log in with your Google account from school so that your Google ID will show up up here. When you've done that, then you can save uh, your documents because we're going to want to save each graph we make, each copy that we make, so that we can submit those uh, sharing links to uh, the Google form that you've been sent through Google Classroom. So here's how that process goes. When you click on the name, you'll notice the option to duplicate or rename comes up. So I'm going to click on the name. I'm going to change this name to B14 and make sure that this duplicate link uh, box is checked. Okay, That will create a new graph for me called B14. Notice the name has changed. If you go to your function list here or your uh, graph list, you'll see I have B14 and somewhere else I have B12. So they're both there. All right. This little three bars here, that shows you your list. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to go through and put the information in for number 14 from the assignment. The original function was x squared plus 7x plus 10. Your graph will change. Don't pay attention to that right now. The other one was x squared plus 2x uh, minus 15. Okay, now leave that alone. It's going to stay blue. The next piece is to factor this, and you'll do it on paper, uh, which we've already probably done since you've completed the assignment. And we'll put the factored form in here. Notice it's hidden. I don't want this graph to show. So I leave this uh, grayed out. But we'll put the factored form in. This is going to be uh, x plus 2 and x plus 5 on top, and the x plus 5s are going to cancel. And on the bottom, we get x plus 5 and x minus 3. So the x plus 5s cancel. And this is the factored form. Okay, 
That means I'm going to have a zero in the denominator when x equals 3. So my vertical asymptote, I'll change to x equals 3. And notice the red line comes in here. And we do have that vertical asymptote. In the numerator, my zero is actually the same. It's still negative 2, 0, just because this function happens to have that zero there. And so I leave this one alone. That's here. My whole is different, though. x plus 5 is, what's can is what canceled. So we actually have a whole at negative 5, not negative 4. So change this to a 5 and change this to a 5. We need to plot the x and y values so the whole shows up in the right place, but I'm too lazy to actually compute it, so I have decimals do it for me. Notice if I just put g of negative 5, it'll compute the place where that's supposed to show up. Function g doesn't have a whole. Function f does. Uh, so it'll plot the dot, and then all we did, and you won't have to change this because I've already done it, but if you do want to see how I did it, when you go edit list and you click on the green dot next to that point, you can just select the style as a whole. So that's what we did there. So I've got my vertical asymptote at x equals 3. Uh, horizontal, uh, we haven't done that yet. We've done the 0 at negative 2, 0. Negative 5 is the whole. And then for horizontal asymptotes, again, this one happens to have the same degree. So we make the horizontal asymptote the ratio of the leading coefficients. They're the same. It's 1 and 1. So uh, I just put 1 over 1. The asymptote's there. And you can see that it's... Uh, graph here on the picture. So we've changed all those pieces and then I want to hit save so that now my B14 is the correct answer for number 14 off the sheet. Now when I'm ready to submit all my links, if you go up here to the upper right corner, there's a share graph item. And this link here, you can copy it and you can paste it into the form uh, so that I'll have a copy and I can look at your work. So we're going to do that for each of the 14 problems. I gave you number 12 and I just showed you how to do number 14 so you have another 12 other questions that you'll have to finish on your own. But all we do is go through and we make these adjustments. If you ever need to add information, like let's say that a graph has two vertical asymptotes, that will happen in this assignment. So I click on this little note where it says vertical asymptotes and I hit the plus sign and it'll let me put in another expression. So I can put in a second asymptote here, like x equals negative 3. Obviously, that doesn't make sense for this function, but if I wanted it, it would show up. If you want to turn that into a dashed line, then you go here, and you just change the style to the dots and hit done. Now, I'm going to delete that now because that is not an asymptote in my uh, graph. But if you needed another one, you just click on the heading and then do a plus sign, and you can add another uh, expression. So we'll delete that to get it back to where it's supposed to be. If you make any changes, just hit save to make sure your work is saved. But you can see how this rational function also has two branches. It also has a vertical and a horizontal asymptote, and it also has a zero and a whole. Some functions don't have horizontal asymptotes. Remember, if the degree on bottom is larger than the degree on top, there there's a zero for the horizontal asymptote. And if the degree on top is bigger than the degree on bottom, there is no horizontal asymptote. Some functions don't have zeros. If everything cancels in the numerator and there's nothing left, you don't have zeros. The reason we had zeros is we had something left up here. Okay? So just keep that in mind that uh, they don't all look exactly like number 12 and number 14. It just so happens that those two are very similar. Okay, so good luck with this. Hopefully we'll be able to get these graphed and submitted through the Google form. Take care.